Hello, welcome to A Piece of Cake Utah. I'm your host, Katherine O'Donnell, and today I'm going to show you how to make some simple and fun fondant flowers, um, also with a little bit of gum paste added to it, and we'll talk about the differences and what you need to use and things like that. So first we're going to make a calla lily. That is one of my very favorite flowers. Uh, lilies are just, I don't know, to me, one of the most beautiful flowers, hence I named my daughter Lily, but <laughs> no, that's aside from the point. But anyway, okay, so first we're going to start off with our white fondant. So I've got a little bit of white fondant and I've got a little bit of white gum paste. Now you're probably wondering what's the difference, why should I use gum paste, why should I use fondant, things like that. Um, it really depends on what you're doing with your project. If it's going to be something edible, if it's something that you can take a long time to dry, um, you, yeah, definitely is going to be eaten, then you'll want to use fondant. It, uh, gum paste is edible. It's not very delicious, but <laughs> it is edible. And so if it's something that you want to last a long time, to dry pretty quick, and to have kind of a stiffness and a firmness to it, then you'll use gum paste. You will never use gum paste um, to cover your cakes with. You don't want to mix it with your fondant to cover your cake, anything like that. Just because the texture of it, the stiffness and the firmness doesn't lend to being yummy on the cake and also it's going to dry up really firmly. So you want to make sure that you don't use gum paste with your fondant when you're covering your cake. But everything else, all of your little bows and ribbons and flowers especially, things that probably will not be eaten on the cake need to be with gum paste added to it so that it can dry faster, it'll set up for you and have kind of a stiff body to it so that your flowers will look nice. Okay, so we're gonna start off by kneading our gum paste and our fondant together. You can do about a 50-50 mix, and if you're unsure, you know, it, it doesn't have to be specifically 50-50, uh, but if you want to, you can roll out both pieces and then take a large cookie cutter and cut out the same shape uh, piece, and then that'll be, you know, 50-50 and you'll mix them together. But I have just kinda eyeballed it here and grabbed one of each and we're gonna go with that. Gum paste is really sticky, so I'm using a lot of uh, shortening on my hands and my workspace today. You can use, again, the either the shortening or the powdered sugar with this. Either one works really great. Um, it just depends on what you wanna do with it and also because flowers, you tend to want them to get really thin so that you can do some delicate work with them and things like that um, they so they look more realistic you'll want to use the shortening so that you can get them thinned out and they won't rip and tear on you and dry out and things like that so okay this is pretty good mixed up here and you can use just straight gum paste you don't have to use any fondant with it whatsoever I just like using white fondant with the gum paste especially because or any color fondant but I, I like using the fondant with the gum paste mixed because the fondant helps the gum paste is a little bit translucent in a sense I mean not really translucent but it just has this translucent look to it to me so this is my per personal preference that I mix those two together. Okay, so we've got that mixed up. We're going to put shortening on our workspace here. To make sure our flour doesn't stick. And then we're going to roll this out. Um, the thickness that you roll it out really depends on what you're doing. And we're going to roll this out kind of thin. It's going to be a little bit of a large flower, so we don't want to be too thin or else it's going to kind of fall over. We don't want it to be too thick or else it won't look that realistic. So I kind of like to roll it out to the thickness of a dime. Okay, and that's good enough. I think, let me, yeah, that's good. You want to check your piece to make sure it didn't stick. Then wipe away any little marks or things. Um, now for our calla lily, the cool thing that we're gonna use now is just a little heart cutter. There's all different sizes, so you can make any size of calla lily. I'm gonna use this really large one. I just found it at a hobby um, craft store. There we go. And this for me is the perfect size to get the most realistic looking calla lily. So we're gonna just push that down and cut out our big heart piece. 
get rid of this extra. We'll put it in our bag so that it doesn't get hard and dried out. Okay, and so now we have our little heart shape for our calla lily. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is take our thin foam, and I think I've mentioned in a previous show that you know you don't have to buy this kind of th foam from the cake decorating aisle. If you have that uh, foam paper type stuff, you can use that, it works really well. Just anything that will be kind of soft and firm at the same time. <laughs> I'm sure that makes a lot of sense, okay. So we're gonna lay down our, our piece here on our thin foam, and we're just going to thin out the outside edges of it to kind of give it that ruffled flower look. And I'm just taking my ball tool here, and I'm just gonna hold it like a pencil and kind of rub it a little bit all along the edges of my heart shape piece of fondant and gum paste. And I don't wanna to push too hard or else it's going to rip it. And I also don't wanna to push too hard because I don't really wanna distort the shape. I wanna make sure it stays in a nice heart shape here. But I just wanna thin out those edges so that it looks a little more realistic. And there's all different ways different motions to do that. I know some people prefer up and down, some people prefer back and forth, things like that. You can just find the way that you really like to do it and what gives you the best results. But again, you wanna do it kind of soft. I'm not pushing very hard at all. And you can test it out, preferably on a part that's not going to show to see how hard you should push but it really is rather soft. It's kind of like erasing something on a piece of paper. You don't really push that hard on it, unless you're like my son who <laughs> loves to drive down his pencil on it. Okay, so we've got our piece here that's nice and thinned out. Now this back side is what we're going to be using for the top of our piece. Um, this part here that's kind of marked up now from my ball tool, I'm gonna use as the underneath part inside of the flower. So, okay. We're going to put that aside for just a second and let it set up for, for just a minute. I'm still going to put some plastic wrap over it so that it doesn't dry out completely, but we, but we want it to set up so that it won't fall over when we put it on our little um, shape, our little form here. Um, next, we're going to do our, the centerpiece, the calyx of our, uh, or not calyx, sorry, the stamen, there we go, of our flower. Um, I like to use the bamboo sticks. They're really thick, they're long, they've got a sharp pointed end. And I like to use these for these flowers because they are a larger flower than when it's completely attached to the stamen and everything. You can kind of drive it down into the cake and it holds, the, holds it there for you really firmly. So you can either do a white stamen like I've done here, or you can start out with yellow because they are yellow. If you do a white one, then you can paint it or do different things, different colors with it um, to make it look really fun and kind of match the wedding colors or something or the birthday colors or whatever you're using it for. But I'll just show you with some of this yellow here. And it's kind of easier to start out with that base color and then paint it or cover it with sugar sprinkles or things like that. And that way, if any of the base shows through or doesn't get completely coated with the coloring, it's not gonna look weird or anything. You'll have that yellow base for it. Okay, so we'll soften this up a little bit and then we're just gonna roll it out to a nice long snake-like shape. And you can buy little tools that will pipe it out for you in perfect shape. I don't really, <laughs> it's faster for me to just do it like this and and easier. Okay, so we're gonna take our heart shape cutter here and we want to make sure that this stamen is only about three-fourths of the length of the base of this heart shape up to the top here because if it's any longer than that it's gonna really stick out of your flower at an awkward length and look unrealistic and everything so you only want it to go about three-fourths in there. So once you have the length and the shape there you go, the size that you want for your stamen, you can just take your little heart cutter and get it to be about three-fourths in there and then push it down to cut it off. And you've got your little, your little piece here for your stamen. Now we're gonna put it onto our 
bamboo skewer here. And I've noticed, working with these before, that if you just kind of break these off or snap them off or anything, something like that, they tend to fray really bad at the top here. And so what I've done is I've taken my scissors and I've just kind of shaved off those, those end pieces that have broken off. Because if I stick that up in there, they're going to start coming out of the stamen really weird. And then I also just start with the point here that's already pointed for me and I slip it up to the, the tip there. So we're going to push it down on the top of our stamen here. And we're going to wiggle it through, just kind of wiggle it back and forth. And I kind of broke through here, and that's fine if you break through it. We're going to be, there we go, we're going to be shaping it around our bamboo stick and kind of molding it still. And you can even roll it again, and it will come out just fine. There we go. So we've got our little stamen here. And so we're just going to set that aside to dry. And we've got one of these already dried. Hooray! <laughs> and so the different ways that you can use to, to coat this, to cover it and everything are really fun. Um, Wilton sells a really fun sparkle gel. It stays tacky for a while, so if you do choose this option, you'll have to let it set up and dry for quite a while. It's not going to be very dark in color. It just gives kind of a little shimmer to it. So this would be a good option if you already have a yellow stamen. Then you can just brush it with this yellow piping gel, sparkle gel, and that would be really good to give it a little bit of shimmer. Another option is you can buy some of this gold, edible gold dust, and you can just spray it on there. It works really well. Um, again, it takes a little while for it to dry. Um, it's completely edible, so they could eat it if they wanted to, but I really like this spray because it gives it a really dark coating on it. And so if you want it to be a really shiny gold, you're going to get a shiny gold. Um, another option, and this is probably what we're going to do today, is you can take these little sugar sprinkles that are yellow, and then I would just paint this with my vanilla flavoring and then roll it in my sugar sprinkles. And I like that method just because it kind of gives it some texture to it, some really fun texture. Um, it's a great, just, I don't know, it's just fun for me and I like how it turns out. So we're going to open these up and do that here in a second. Um, another option too is they do, Wilton does have a yellow food mist and so you can spray your white little stamen with this yellow one and get a yellow one and that would work out great. Uh, we've got some gold shimmer dust that you can use. We've got some gold luster dust. There's just, yeah, the possibilities are endless. So find your favorite and do that. So we're going to do the sugar sprinkles. So I'm going to pour some out here on my paper towel. Just pour them out in a nice big, big amount and then take my vanilla here and we're just going to paint all over this guy. Make sure he's nice and wet and sticky. And I like using the vanilla better than just water because the water takes a while to dry. The vanilla dries a lot faster. And especially when you run it in the sugar, it seems to really kind of melt the sugar to it so it stays on really well. I just really like using the vanilla. So we're just going to keep rolling this back and forth here so I've got everything coated. If there's any spots that don't seem to want to allow the sugar to stick to it, you can always take your paintbrush and dab a little bit more vanilla there and then dip it back into your sprinkles. Works out really great. So here we have our little stamen that is covered in our sugar sprinkles. And we're going to allow that to sit here and dry for a second while we get back to our flour. We'll put this stuff aside here and our little flower here has set up a little bit not completely but a little bit which is really good oops I forgot the next step we'll cover them back up the next step is we're going to create a little stand or a little cone for our flower to dry on to sit up and dry because obviously this is a rounded shape flower and if I laid it down to dry on the table or something it would just fall flat on itself. You could stick some uh, tissues or something like that inside of it, but it's just not going to give you the great result that you want. So the first thing we're going to do is take a piece of cardstock, and I've got a little compass here to help me draw a perfect circle. Now again, we're going to take 
our compass and put it inside of our little heart shape uh, cookie cutter here. And we want it to be about three fourths of the way up. That's a great number there, three fourths. Okay, so we'll stick this onto our paper and draw our perfect circle here. So we've got our perfect circle. And then you would just cut that completely out and then cut out a triangular shape from it so that you could close the two sides and create a little cone. And I've got one that I made right here. And I taped it shut and everything. And it's just a fun little cone. Um, you can make them all different sizes. Once you've got it closed and taped, you can, you can put your flower on there and just measure it and make sure that it's the right height. If it's not, you can trim it some more and trim it down so that it's the right height. And what I mean by the right height, for this flower especially, um, when it sits down and the flower gets put on top of it, you want the edges of the petals to be able to touch the table because that's going to help curl the tips of your, or the edges of your flower. So we're going to put our flower on that. And I already know that it's kind of the right shape that, and height and everything. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it this way so that the top of our heart wraps around and kind of hugs. There we go. Hugs our little, our little cone there. OK. And we want to make sure that you've got a little bit of a hole here on top so that your stamen can go through there later on. If there's no hole here, then it's wrapped up too tightly and you just scoot it down so that it can, it can be, have a little hole there. Then we're going to take our vanilla. Let me turn this around so you can see this. And we're going to brush this side or the other side, whichever one you want, of your flower. And so you'll bring them together. And this part here is supposed to curl a little bit. So you'll curl that back. And then all of the edges, in fact, kind of curl up a little bit. So you're just going to go along and that, that part that you thinned out for this flower, you're just going to curl up and kind of help it have more of a realistic look to it. And so right here to the very bottom of your flower, you can see how the table is helping to keep that little curl to it. If you want to let it set up for a few minutes, and then when you come back to it, maybe like five or ten minutes later, you can keep curling this little edge part back some more until it starts to dry that way. Um, you know, it's nice to have a picture of a real calla lily right next to you so that you can see what it looks like and all the different features that you want to do to it to make sure it looks realistic. So we'll put that aside to dry. And we have our already dried one here, ready to go. And so we can take our calyx and slip it through. And it should meet up with the bottom of your flower just nicely. And your stick should come through very well if you want to paint some vanilla down in there so that it will stay and you know hold its shape there and everything. That's great. In fact, we'll do that here right now so that it can dry that way. And then, you know, you can either stand there for a while and hold it like this and just help it to dry or something like that. Or if you want to stick it into your styrofoam, bring your styrofoam over here, you can stick it down and just keep going all the way down with it until, there we go, until it meets, the flower meets the styrofoam, and that will help keep it set up that way so that the stamen still is in contact with it and can dry nicely. And then when you're ready to go, you can just pop the whole thing out. Um, another thing that I like to use to help things stick together faster and better, of course, I've mentioned before, is the white chocolate or just any kind of melting chocolate. You just swirl some in there and stick it down there and hold it for a minute or two, and it will dry and look really nicely and or work really nicely. And then you don't have to worry about waiting for a long time for it to dry. Uh, the vanilla, sometimes it just takes a while for it to dry and will not adhere as nicely as the chocolate. So you can just let that, put the chocolate in there. It'll set up really fast. Of course, if it's a really hot day, it might 
get soft and your stamen will fall out, but <laughs> that's the risk that you have to take. Um, so after you've got that all put together, you can just wrap a little bit of green fondant around the base of it to make it look more realistic. Or I usually just stick those in my cake and then add my leaves and things like that afterwards. I always add my leaves at the very end, kind of as a filler, just to make sure that everything's filled in where I need it to be. So that is our calla lily. And next up, we're gonna show you how to make some fun daisies, and then we'll do a pansy. And so we'll see you in a minute.